Hello, hello. Um, today's tutorial is going to be going over how to create a contact form, or um, in this case, I'm going to create a separate contact page um, in Show It. So you can see here I have a blank page with my website's um, navigation in the footer. I'm just going to rename this page um, over here in page info to contact just so it's easier to find. Over here on the site, um, you can see it's listed down here. Um, I already have a contact form on my website's homepage, but this is a great example of A, how to build a contact form in Show It, um, and B, if you want to have a separate page for your contact information and form altogether. So um, right here is just a blank canvas that we have here. Um, I am the first thing I'm going to do is um, just create a title here that says that it's the contact form or the contact page. Um, you could add your phone number and info and things like that. Um, if you would like, you can add any kind of information, obviously. Um, I'm going to come over here and open the mobile as well so that I can kind of um, design these side by side. And I'm going to lengthen this up a little bit. Okay. So basically the way that contact forms are built in Show It is through text boxes. So a lot of times you'll see some colored boxes with the text um, inside of them. Um, and that is exactly how I'm going to build um, that out today. So first I'm going to start with my background boxes. Um, I'm going to use rectangles here and I'm going to choose... Um, just a nice pink color that goes along with my website's colors right now and make it into a um, form uh, input size. I'm going to do the same thing over here. You could obviously design this however you'd like. <clears throat> okay, and I'm going to just make a few of these. I'm just copying and pasting. I find it a lot easier to design mobile and desktop at the same time instead of going back and doing it um, later. Um, this is also a good example of being able to use the distribute buttons so everything's distributed equally. Um, that is a nice tool to have. Um, okay, now I'm going to make this last box a little bit longer um, so that it can fit a message. Okay. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to create the actual inputs uh, for the um, contact form. These are going to be text boxes here. So basically you're gonna select however you want the text to show up as. I'm just gonna use my subheading um, pre-fill here. So basically this text box is what we are going to be turning in to the text input. So we're gonna make this as long as the box is so that people are able to fill that whole amount if they'd like. If it was this big, then people would only be able to type to here. Um, and if it was this big, they could type all the way down into this box. So we wanna make sure that it is just uh, large enough to fill the space that we want it to fill. I'm also gonna make this justify bluff um, just for uh, the um, form itself here. So I'm going to make this my um, name box. So now what we do to make this um, able to input text is go into text properties and you're going to under contact form here click enable input. This is now a form input text box. So you have some options here. You can make it required. You could put it in the subject of your email, or if this was an email address, this is what you would reply to. And I'm also gonna label this name. So now when I select this, you can see it says form input and name. And if I go back into text properties, that's all here. Now I'm gonna go over here and just arrange the same things over here. I'm going to make it the same. This is Josephine Sands over here. And 
I'm going to lengthen this. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is just copy this, paste it, and move it down because it's the same size. But this is not going to be another name input. This is going to be my email address input. Move this down. So now this is obviously enabled to be a form input, but I want to change this to email. And I'm also going to make sure that I click reply to here so that if I reply to this email, um, it will reply to the email address that they've input. I'm going to take it out of in subject. And then we are going to do the same thing, copy and paste. You can obviously do this for as many lines as you'd want. A lot of people uh, have pretty um, involved contact forms, but just for the sake of this uh, tutorial, it's going to be pretty simple. Okay, so this is the subject. Come over here, change this to subject. I'm gonna unclick re reply to here and put in subject because it is in fact the subject. And then the last one I'm gonna do here is the message. This is where they're actually going to type out what they are contacting you about. See that I'm dragging the text box to be large enough to fit the whole screen here. This is super important. I'm gonna click out of in subject because I don't want the whole message to show up. Okay, so now I have my contact form. The next thing that I'm going to do is rearrange these from top to bottom because when I do this, I have it in order here. Name, email address, subject, and message. Now when I preview this, not only can I click in these, but if they're in order like that, I can tab down through them. So I'm hitting tab down to get to those different ones. If those were not in order, it would not do that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is create a submit button. And I'll just create some text here. This is not the prettiest uh, form, but it's doing its job for this tutorial. Do the same over here on mobile. Okay, so I've created this submit button. Now I need to make it functional. So there's a couple ways that you can do submit buttons. Um, if you select the submit and do um, click actions, you can link it to a page and submit the contact form. This would be an idea of like if you had a separate page that said thank you or if you wanted them to take them to a specific page after they submitted a thank you or after they submitted the form. In this case, you would so select the page you wanted it to go to and then hit Oh, um, submit contact form as well. Another thing you can do is have it go to a different um, canvas, which is what I typically do. Um, and I will show you how I do this. So basically, I'm going to create two canvas views on my form. I'm going to rename this as form just so we have it. In the first form, I'm going to drag all of this stuff, all of the inputs and the button into the first view. So now I have um, this as my first view. Now on my submit button, I'm going to select canvas, this canvas, and I'm going to click view two, and I'm going to select submit contact form here. Um, and then on view two, when this disappears, now I'm just going to add, um, thank you, um, we will be in touch soon. So now, after they submit the contact form, they will be um, taken to the view that says thank you. So now we're going to test this out. Preview mode here. So Katie.
And when I hit submit, this pops up as a nice thank you and they can then still navigate because all that's up here. But if we had changed this to a page, for example, quick actions, if I change this to page and if I go home and submit contact form now, do the same thing. And now when I submit it, it's just going to take me back to the home page. So you have a couple of options there on how to um, have your form function. You can really create as many of these as you want. You can ask questions. Um, the only thing you really can't do is create drop down menus or have check boxes. Um, you will need to have some sort of embeddable code from a, a CRM like Dubsado or something like that that you could then embed onto your uh, form. Um, but that is another lesson, um, but this is how you create your own contact form and show it.